What is going on? It is go time. This is Mortimer Martin. This is yet another Watcher of Realms video. Today, we tackle one of the most important areas in the game. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it, but people are having a challenge with it. So today we're taking on, yet again, the Guild the Guild. So the goal of today is to show you guys some of the amazing options you guys could do during the Guild v Guild because everybody's trying to get a good score so they can get better rewards, which includes things like your Guild bump, your Guild Gold, thicker your Guild XP, also gives you some of the ancient um, summons that you guys could use for your future summons because some nice banners that's been coming through. And it's nice to have a little bit extra that might get you that legendary lord you've been looking for. Plus, there's some new legendary lords jumping into the game, like Valderon's gonna be coming soon. Um, there's a new one for the Piercers faction that actually looks like he does a lot of damage. It's interesting because most lords, for the most part, don't do a lot of damage. For the most part, they don't. Um, the majority of them are just, you know, really good support champions and they have a lot of stuff in the kit that helps everybody around them, but except for maybe Sokadens and like Valderon and I know I'm missing like a blatantly obvious one out here, but those are like some of the ones that do it. Twin Fiend, for the most, he does damage, he's a damage dealer, sure. Um, you know, those champions there deal damage, but our goal is to get these points. You understand? That's the most important thing. As I sit here, I'm sitting here, I'm so tempted to just make this a pulls video. Oh, I have to resist the urge, but I'm gonna make one today. I'll make another one today. Now, what kind of a Guild v Guild video would this be if I did not include, of course, the war colors? It is go time, so it is, oh, they're not war coloring. That's better, that's better. Dim myself a little bit. I had to get a little more red in the background. I'll have to fix that later because I like my war colors looking uniform, you understand? But let's get to it shall we so in guild v guild we have our second round that we're doing i did the first round and got a straight perfect eight which is awesome that's my favorite score to get of course it's funny every time we do these things we start off with our guys doing our attacks late and then they get into it later which is i'm fine with that because you'll see this score right here and you're like oh we're losing but then you realize we have like 30 more attacks than they do so something mindful to remember now let's pick one here let's start with the top I'm gonna think about, so I can get easy kills. Like I told you guys before, one of the easiest ways to get wins in here is to go in here, look at what teams are already been attacked, and then go at their battle record. So team two has already been attacked a few times. If I were to go in here and I were to play this video, I would see how they attack this team. Of course, honestly, with this team, I would probably just send the mages in to kill Valkyra, and then I would just send a bunch of um, melee fighters in to kill off to kill off Olaf. But just showing you guys how I do it. But also if you notice something else is a big problem. Both of the um, mage and the marksman are out in the open. So sometimes there's a bug, not a bug, but there's a um, benefit in the game where the defenders get priority to get attacked. But if it's just enough of a window of range where the other targets are closer, before they get to the defender, they can get one shot as you just saw. So I would see that and say, oh yeah, that's cool. I'll go ahead and take on that. Now, that was too easy a win, let's be real. I would love to go and just take that win. Let's find a more challenging, um, challenging enemy here. Uh, let's look at the bottom here. Let's, if they're bunched up behind Olog, I have a good option. They are. That's gonna be fun. With this team, they're doing, doesn't does Valeria do magical damage? Let me make sure. Magical damage. So magical, magical, magical. So if I send a magic tank in, they're gonna do really well here. So I'm gonna send that. Also going to send, instead of this bad boy, I'm gonna send the um, bookkeeper, which does damage in the cross symbol, you know, boom, boom, boom. It's, it's dope, it's nice, it's used, used, really useful. So I'm putting him up front because I want my damage dealer to get the best benefit when I set for quick, um, quick affiliate. And quick, 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 click quick affiliate here. So all I wanna do is be able to kill the enemies around Olog, which are going to be um, Valkra, and are going to be Hex. I'm looking to make them get some L's, you understand? I'm looking to get them to make some L's, so it's going to occur. So if I could damage those two out, I'm good. The problem is Aelin is a heck of a healer. Y'all hear me? She's a heck of a healer. But along with that, I'm considering whether I should send the bow guys in as well. I think I'm going to send the bowmen in also, because the bowmen may be able to take out Vierna before she can get heals in. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, so I put them in order of what I want to get the best BP to. Bookkeeper first, then I have my uh, melee attackers next, then I have my bowmen because it's just good to have them. 
They're not necessary in this comp. That's just in case I wanted to drop Vierna ahead of time. Then I have my main tank and then my other option for tanks. I like the main tank because he does great defense and great offense. He's super tanky. I think he has like two million, um, two, was it two million HP? It's a lot. All right, let's go. So first things first, I'm sending off my tank because I want my tank to be able to soak up their ultimates, get rid of as many of them as possible. Vierna's ultimate is almost irrelevant here. So I'm going to go ahead and send my bookkeepers because I want this to be an early match. I think it's going to be an easy one. This feels like it's going to be an easy match. Try to send your damage dealers if you can. Try to send them double stack. That means send them both at the same time. Oh, well, didn't need the bowman. They took care of that themselves. Now I'm going to just work my way through the rest of the comp. And that means sending my melee boys here. So you saw that's a drop. Yeah, this match is done. I should have just sent faster walkers. So now it's just overpowering Olog. So I'm going to send my other tank in who's super slow, but he's going to be able to help with the damage. But the melee guy should be fine. Yep, that's a win. Oh, y'all buttholes for killing Aelin too. <laughs> y'all dirty for that. But yeah, that team was easy to beat because I had the bookkeeper. And I've told you guys before, this is a pro tip as well. If you don't have the champions or you don't have the um the demon options in Guild v Guild, how do you do some of the um, gear raids that are associated with them. So what do I, what does Mortar mean by that? Does that make any sense? What, that, what, what do I mean by that? So if I go into here, go to edit teams, just, edit teams not where you have to go. But if I were to go to look for champions in the demon soldier thing, which is the little icon on the top right, it looks like a little demon, tap that. Here, if you don't have a certain champion, like I don't have these three on the bottom. I don't have Maul, I don't have the, um, the little assassin chick, and I don't have the skeleton champion. So if I were to go over to the Skeleton Champions, a tiny plus icon, some of you guys already know this, some of you guys don't, bear with me, let me encourage everybody to make dope, make good scores. You tap the little plus symbol, and it shows you, you can get this guy in Gear Raid 1. So if you farm a bunch of Gear Raid, run, Gear Raid 1, you're much more likely to get this guy into your teams. That's how I got Bookkeeper. I don't think I can show how I, got, how I can get Bookkeeper again, but he was also, a reward for doing tons of gear rate one as a chance every time you run it that you can get him so i did a bunch of gear rate one one day i said i'm gonna just do it make it happen and i ended up getting them which is nice so look at this team here oh it's the same team as before uh so i don't have to change anything so just auto fight i want you guys to see why it's important to do this stuff so i looked at this team right here and the first thing i had was an immediate answer of what champ is going to do the most work and that was the bookkeeper Set the tanks in. Vierna's ultimate is irrelevant against tanks. It's useless against tanks. Um, Hex doesn't do much damage initially. He takes a while to get started up. And also, he's not doing any single target dest destruction in Gil v. Gil. He's doing good against his tank, but by the time he's in action, it's way too late. It's way too late for it to matter. And then it's just a battle of who can outheal versus who can damage deal. And, it's, and them killing Aelin is crazy. Wait. Aelin has two different death animations. I didn't know that. She has two different death sounds. Oh, well, you know them both now. Review the video early if you want to hear the other one. <laughs> but she is one of the most powerful healers in the game, too. If I'm not mistaken, she's an AoE healer as well. She's an insanely strong healer. Now, this is like an interesting challenge here. So, here's what's interesting about this match. It's the same comp. Bookkeeper would win again. So, I might even do it. I might even be so bold as to do an auto fight. But Elowen is here. Elowen is what's going to make this a challenge because of her rapid heals. And then Broke here takes a very long time to drop. I think we're going to win this. I'm going to just set it for auto fight. I'm not going to touch it. I want to see what happens. I think that Silas is going to melt our tank. That's completely fine. Um, yeah, Silas is probably going to melt that tank. But the problem with this is, look where Silas is aimed. Silas is in a weird position. He can't do anything until I'm one tile away from Broke here which is trash. It allows him to get his ultimate here, but he can't kill anything that's out of that range. So with that being said, it's gonna cost both of them their lives right here. And now it's just beating on Broke here. So that's something wise to know. Your position of where you aim your champions is important. In this case, I would have aimed Silas down range just so I could have the chance to do more damage to maybe kill something before it got close. Maybe I could one-shot a bookkeeper to keep those guys alive. In this case, it didn't. 
but I just pressed auto fire. I didn't even run through that. I saw it was the exact same comp, the same champions did the right job against it, and it made it a cakewalk. In a world. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not good at doing that. I, <laughs> I try to do it, I'm not good at it. But these guys are, yes, we have our very first sponsorship on the channel. It's brought to you by Aaron Renfold, who is the writer of um, Lit RPGs. They're really dope. Yeah, I mean, it's actually literature RPGs, not, not me using the term lit and hoping that it sounds cool. He said, I love what you guys are doing on the channel. I want to put my stuff out there because you guys probably will enjoy it. I will say I'm loving it. It's pretty dope. He has a book series, not just a book, so you don't have to wait on them like Game of Thrones and then get crazy stuff coming on TV and it looks like crap. I don't want it. Yeah, we don't have to worry about that right now. No, no throne game issue. It's, it's a series called The Resonant Cycle. It's freaking dope. It follows this character named Ty. Mm -hmm. He's not like the god. He's, he's He's, he's the underdog, he's a typical underdog. Ty and like a whole bunch of humans were like summoned through these portals and they have to choose these different gods to link up with and power up. Think of like a really dope clash of like Hunger Games, but you get to choose your own god entity and use their powers to power up and stuff. It's actually pretty dope and I will say, if I must say, the voice acting on this thing is freaking fire. I'm gonna play a clip of it while we're chatting right here. Does that little shit have any idea what he just did? We should smite that bastard now and have done with it before he becomes a problem. We agreed on the terms and bound ourselves to the great arbiter. As dire as things had become, at least they lived in interesting times. I mean, like it's actually high quality. And right now you can get it for, I believe it's three bucks. The books all together are like six bucks all together. So they're not expensive. But I wanted to put this out here. I thought this content was really fire. Shout out to my dude Aaron for supporting the channel. I want you guys to check out The Resonance Cycle. Look up Divine Invasion. I'll put a link in the description. When you see it and when you listen to it, I want you to let me know what you think. You can get it in Kindle, you can get it in Amazon, you can just buy the book outright. But I wanna get you guys feedback. And in the, in the review section, tell them what Mike sent you. Give them some five stars. My dude's dope and show them that he made the right channel for supporting Mortar Mike. This has been your boy Mortar Mike. Let's get back to the video, shall we? Yes, in a world. You guys see I'm tapping them and going straight into the battle with them. Cause I want you guys to actually see what the issue is when you see these teams. And then I want you guys to go for the demons that you play with so that you can have the right options when it's time to battle them. Nothing's worse than you see a way to beat a team and then you can't beat them because you didn't do gear raids or you didn't do um, guild boss to get the stuff that you need for it. And can I just say also, I love the fact that Captain Rev is back. We brought back Rev. Shout out to Fastidious, shout out to Rescue Panda, um, a couple others as well. Shout out to y'all, we put the motion in there to bring back Rev. I'm pretty sure it was something that was on the schedule, but it felt good to say, hey, we need to get this champion back. And he's officially back in the game today to be summoned. Yeah, I gotta do a summon video today. I have to, it must occur now. Now I really have to do one, cause I'm seeing them saying, hey, buy the skin. I'm not buying the skin until I have the champ. <laughs> I got the hats that skin and no hats, so this is there for display purposes. But that was part of the, um, the gold um, thing or whatever they do every month, the gold dragon or whatever it is. So we beat that guy pretty good. Oh, let's try this one out. So this guy's never been attacked either. That's an interesting team. Are they bunched up? They are bunched up. So here's what I would do against this team. This team would actually, to me, would be a will actually be a challenge because Tauros, I said Tauros, <laughs> That's a Pokemon. Um, Torador. <laughs> Torador is um, pretty tanky. And Valeria is pretty tanky as well, as far as her having an ult active and not being able to get killed. But this is going to, I think this is going to be an easy kill. It's just going to be who can outdo who in, a um, in duration here. I think I might even be as bold as to do an auto fight. Even though I know, I absolutely know they're going to obliterate my tank. If Valeria has her ultimate and she's reaching. Cyrus doesn't do nearly as much damage. I'm auto fighting this. Auto fighting this. I wanna let the bookkeeper go in there and see if the bookkeeper can drop Valeria um, after her ultimate is done. Typically Valeria's probably gonna be able to get one shot by the bookkeeper, um, by two bookkeepers at once, of course. And I just wanna see if this option works. Torador, is a, Torador and Baron are straight menaces for being defenders in Guild v Guild. They're very good options. Problem is I gotta kill this guy twice. 
and hopefully Valerius ult. Yep, Valerius ult is gone, so that's most of the damage is gone. I think I made it take over. No, I think we're good. We're good. Hey, sometimes you don't want to run full auto. <laughs> but yeah, that worked. I looked at the team. So here's what's interesting about this setup here. There's a lot of ways you can set your champs up, but when you bunch them up in the fortresses, which are like the big areas here, I'm gonna call those the fortresses. I think the small ones are called strongholds. Um, when you bunch them up, the bookkeeper becomes the first option to beat them. Now, that being said, the bookkeeper can be countered by Lord Hearts because Lord Hearts gives tanky shields. And they don't look like a lot, but they take more damage, especially for his faction allies. So that's something mindful, something to be mindful of. Lord, or King Hearts, King Hearts, Lord Hearts, King Hearts, and Lord Bonus. King Hearts is awesome in Guild v Guild, but he needs to be protected. He actually can get really tanky shields, but his skill set is so predictable, it's kind of easy to counter it. You could put a King Hards in his defense, like where Cyrus is right now, and put a Vortex like one tile below and one tile to the right of where um, Hatson is. And Vortex is gonna be almost impossible to get sniped. Because the shields plus his heals is just that strong. But yeah, we're gonna just push through this here like you saw before, get those easy wins. Um, I need to find a, a, a real challenge team. But yeah, I'm showing you guys. The champions that you have are great. Placement is really important on the important on the defense side. And options for demons are most important on the offense side. You typically should be winning your offensive um, attacks in Guild be Guild. It's made to be in favor of the attackers. Ooh, we have a Captain Rev. I have not fought in, I have not fought Uridin before. Uridin is a fighter, right? Yeah, he's a melee fighter. Interesting. That's a that's a dumb cut. There's no healers. Oh no. Well. So you know what's gonna happen here. This is just, this is a throwaway team. He's literally not even, does he think Volker's gonna heal them all? Auto fight. <laughs> <laughs> if they don't have healer, if they don't have healers on their team, it's a guaranteed win. Just go ahead and tell you now, send in your big AOE damage dealers and wrap it up. Let's see it here. My tank is pulling up. I guess he was thinking Ajax is gonna do something here. They have no healers. My tank is doing work. Now nah, he's got the tank down. Uh, Captain Rev has to get kills to rev up. Bookkeeper just dropped four champions at once. Let that set in. This is why you want to have the right demon champions for this concept. This has got to be the easiest guild v guild that I've done. No disrespect to Zandadu or whatever his name is. No disrespect to him, but hey, put a healer on your team, man. You have a whole bunch of squishy champions. I hope that he sees this video or share it with them or share it, you know what? Not just share with him because I don't want that to be seen. I don't want that to seem offensive. A content creator is making content specifically against you. That's that's not what I'm after. But I want you guys to also share this with your guilds so that they can see what they're doing that could be fixed. I looked at this team and instantly knew I could beat this team. It wasn't even the oh it's possible or it's gonna be tough. It was an instant win. Um, I guess he was thinking that Volca and Wrath are gonna take some heals. Wrath doesn't stand a chance against that tank. And what's cool about this, just look, look at this shot, look at this shot. Everybody. Single hit, everybody died. Volker kind of was surviving the first hit. It was an easy shot because there's no healer and there was no defender. You need to have those two in there because the defender can stall in the front and get tons of heals from the healer. Without that, they're just squishy champions. Was that all eight battles? I think it was. Yeah, that was all eight freaking battles. Oh, um, what did you guys think about the content we tossed in the middle of this video? I know you guys may or may not have known it was coming, but I had to include that. Shout out to my dude, Aaron. Shout out, his nickname is Papa on Discord. I'll put the full thing here. This dude is a beast of a freaking author. Um, I want to thank him again for allowing me the opportunity to make that content, you know, and being the first, the very first sponsor for the channel. I so appreciate him for that. I hope you guys are having an amazing, I mean, an amazing freaking weekend. I hope you pull for rev. I hope you get. I hope you get the captain. And I will say, as much as people are joking about Razak being on the banner, Razak may be one of the best. Free, my, my, honestly, he may be the best option. I will say a close second will either be a Nyx or a Kai. I will put Nyx below that because Nyx does consistent damage, but Nyx does not do burst damage. Nyx duration of her ultimate is like 20 to 25 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. So. I think Razal's immediately, immediate, fast, quick hitting damage, especially if the targets aren't moving, are going to be wonderful um, against the Poseidon boss. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Poseidon boss for a Moto Codex. 
um, who's going to be coming in a few days. And I have to put out my content of um, Plan or Perish. I have to do it for him. And I'm going to go through some of the champions that, are going to th that I think are going to be really good options. I will say this. I think the Victors, just looking at the way this stuff is um, built out in the Mortal Codex, I think the strength is going to be in the Marksmen that do splash damage or they do AoE damage, like your Nyx or like your Razog or like your Kai. Or um, I think Silas is going to have a benefit in here, but I think Silas is going to be stronger against hitting Pelagios himself. Did I say Poseidon earlier? I think I did. Um, hitting Pelagios himself um, because you're hitting a single target and you want high damage on that single target. That being said, I really think Kai is going to be huge because Kai does insane damage, hits multiple targets, and his ult has a chance to hit twice. What I mean by hit twice, it props, you use it, and it shows up again for you to use it again. <laughs> the 20% chance, but we're playing the Mortal Codex. That's RNG. You can get that over and over again and just max out off of RNG. And I think you can go to like 35%. So I'm just saying I'm going to do a little more homework on this build. Um, I guess this Immortal Codex boss is coming in a few days. I appreciate you guys for watching this content. I can't wait to make that video. My next video today is going to be a summon video. I may put this out on Friday. I may put it out on Saturday. It depends on how much the editing I'm going to have to do. I got a lot of stuff I got to put out here for you guys this weekend. Stay tuned. I appreciate you so freaking much. I'm going to change it back to the other colors soon. I'm going to also find out all my kids are stampeding in the living room. Y'all have a good time. This has been your boy, Mortar Mike. Take care and peace.